Hey guys, this is Istanas Lekavicius from TheMigoStudio.com. If you are here for the first time and you were wondering what this channel is about, I produce video tutorials that cover portrait photography, creativity and inspiration. Today I decided to talk about three things every studio portrait photographer should have. Apple boxes are very versatile. They can be used as a platform for sitting or standing or you can put your equipment on them. Apple boxes have four sizes, full, half, quarter and pancake. In photography, the most popular sizes are full and half. Quarter ones are also sometimes used, but personally, I have never used the smaller ones. Apple boxes are made of plywood. This gives them a natural wood texture, which I really like. You can use them as we are. I use unpainted apple boxes with these color backdrops, but you can take an extra step and introduce some more colors by painting the boxes. Or perhaps go for the old looking effect by sanding them. I have apple boxes in various colors to go with different tones and textures of backdrops. With some backdrops, I use natural color apple boxes, while in other sets, especially in the dark ones, I use dark brown boxes. Honestly, I don't like huge branding logos on the Apple boxes. This is not something I want to see in my images, which is why I made these Apple boxes by myself. That's not as hard as it might seem. Apple boxes are great as posing props and can be used to create so many different flattering poses. Using Apple boxes for posing gives you lots of ways to engage your client's hands, arms and shoulders. I know some photographers use digital backdrops. That is not my preferred way because I don't want to spend a lot of time in Photoshop. Digital textures are good if you need to make one or two photos. But if you want to make an entire photo shoot with backdrops and you have several photo shoots per week, then post-production would take way too much time if you choose to use digital backdrops. You can imagine the time needed for editing the background of each photo. Hand-painted backdrops have many advantages. They are very durable and reusable. Because you don't need to cut a piece of it and throw it away after the photo shoot, like you would uh, do with the seamless paper which usually gets wrinkled and dirty during the shot. Even with the cleanest shoes, paper backdrops get dirty immediately. I use hand-painted backdrops on the floor and they look great. Sometimes I clean my backdrop with a vacuum cleaner to give it a fresh look. I like hand-painted backdrops because I can choose whatever color and texture I want. Also, backdrops can help you get a unique portrait look. No two canvases are identical in their texture and color. It's nearly impossible to create the same looking backdrop than hand painting. A hand painted backdrop gives the photo uh, a vibrant and rich appearance. It also adds depth and texture to the image. Hand painted backdrops are very popular with professionals, professional photographers. They are unique and give your portrait a different look in comparison with the one color seamless paper backgrounds. If you are just starting, I recommend beginning with the 1.6 meter to 2.5 meter backdrops. It's great for one or two people. Besides, it's very portable and easy to transport. Of course, if you are planning to shoot more people, you need a bigger backdrop. I can talk a lot about backdrops because I have been painting them myself for three years now. I created Creative Portrait Academy for photographers who want to find their unique style. In the backdrop module, I explained all the details about the backdrop creation process. What materials to choose, what paint to use, how to choose which texture to paint. There is a lot of information you can choose to create subtle 
or more eye-catching textures and go with either dark or light colors. The most important part is that you don't need to have any painting experience. Check the link in the description down below and you will find more information about Creative Portrait Academy. Backdrops improved my students' works and we can help you too. With backdrops, you will have an authentic work, you will be able to create your own personal style, you will be able to turn your client's vision into reality, you will have a creative space anywhere, in your client's home, office, in your own studio, or in the middle of a forest, where you will be able to use beautiful shadows and grass. If you are just starting and you want a cheaper option, then you can use a backdrop stand kit with two light stands and one crossbar. Just take your backdrop, attach the backdrop with clamps on the crossbar and roll it down. Sometimes I use this method, but the best option which I have been using for more than three years now is the invisible hanging backdrop system. This system allows uh, you to change the backdrop easily and quickly. You can do it all by yourself without any assistance. So it's perfect if you don't have an assistant and you need to hang the backdrop yourself. I use a cupo stand. It's great because sea stands are made of metal, so they are heavy. Because of that, it's good uh, to use them outside even without sandbags, if it's not a windy day. You will also need a cupo freeway clamp to put it on the sea stand. I added the cupo 108mm baby stud. It keeps to the backdrop further away from the stand so the backdrop wouldn't touch the stand legs. Another thing uh, that I use is Cupo Supervisor Clamp. This clamp holds the backdrop tube in the middle. Take your backdrop and put it into the clamp. Mount it, turn the handle to press the backdrop slightly. Make sure that the backdrop is hanging in the middle and is straight. There is one more thing I want to mention. The backdrop is hung in the one attachment point, so it's really important that it's secured on the tube properly. Otherwise, you'll have japping and you really don't want that. When you have a backdrop hanging system, backdrops and apple boxes, you can start building your studio portfolio. Yes, this is all you need to start your portrait photography. You can easily create your portfolio with these three elements. Just create a studio at your garage, home, or in the backyard. You can see that in these photos I use only natural light, backdrops, and apple boxes. Thanks for watching and make sure that you like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you found it useful and you want to learn more about portrait photography. See you in the next video.